All right, um, welcome to today, the little talk, the video log, I guess, January 2nd, 2022. Um, just to start off with, um, I had a pretty good day as far as days go. Um, I slept in, had a good sleep, according to the old Fitbit sleep meter. Uh, one of the things I'm going to work on this year is getting good sleep. Um, getting into good sleep practices no matter what I've, I do have to be up for work tomorrow at 5 a.m. So I will be it's about nine o'clock right now. I'm gonna be hitting the sack pretty quick um, Just finishing off my day got my steps in um, went out for a walk after dinner my dinner was uh, about a pound and a half of ribeye steak uh, avocado a couple eggs some cheese olive oil and um, yeah, I had a minute, um, a little bit of a, an easy workout day. Probably about a hundred push-ups. I uh, did some rows, did some, did my stretching. Um, one guy I'd like to shout out to is uh, Ben Patrick, the knees over toes guy. He's been uh, instrumental in helping me get my knees bulletproof, so to speak. So I did a little stretching um, with his workout. It's the Knee Ability Zero. Um, so it works your hams, your, your calves and your, uh, like some, some unorthodox stuff. That's crazy. I, I'd urge anybody that wants to just, uh, that has slowing down and pain in mind, check it out, uh, knees over toes guy, you can Google him. He's all over the internet. Um, that's one thing that I would highly suggest. Um, what I wanted to talk about today is some of the influences I've had, um, in the last year when things started really really going forward i started um following a carnivore type diet in may of last year and we really started seeing body composition changes like within within a month in fact that i was going to do it for 30 days and i've never really stopped it i've i've varied it a bit i'm not afraid of vegetables i i'll eat them but I don't base my to sort of turn it on, turned it upside down on its head about where my my nutrition comes from. So if I if you look at it from a fat soluble vitamin standpoint and a total nutrient ratio, you can go down almost every single um, rabbit hole you want. Whether it's macros, micros, vitamins, minerals. Um, you can go amino acid, you can go gut microbiome. So many people right now are, are in a camp or in a, their their beliefs or their faith is in one thing. And I, I don't know if we were supposed to do that. Like I, I like to think like a big shout out to Brian Sanders from Food Lies and uh, Peak Human uh, Sapien. He's phenomenal. Like his, he's doing a Food Lies movie. I think everybody should check that out because He's kind of challenging the, the mainstream. He's challenging what we're supposed to be doing. And he's finding out from a lot of different things when it comes down to lectins, oxalates, um, food in general. What is food? What isn't food? And I think we've been I think we've been misled. And I would implore you to get start thinking, you know, um, I think everybody needs to take a step back from what the dogma is, from what they've been telling you. And I think you need to ask questions and I think you need to, to do some research for yourself. I mean, anybody that, that says that, you know, research is, should be, belongs to the, the professionals or the industry that it's in, you're kind of missing the point. I mean, if you trust somebody, you trust them. But when there's things that you find out that you don't trust, and you start asking questions, but are un they won't let you answer them. That kind of, it, that scares me from all levels. And I'm not just talking about a situation in the world right now. I'm talking about everything from, you know, if you, if you have a problem with cholesterol, get, get some different opinions. Get some, so there's people out there that do not think LDL cholesterol is a significant, let alone potential marker for uh, heart disease. I mean... These are the questions I had because I was one of, I guess you could call it, Dave Feldman, another guy that you might want to check it out. Uh, uh, he's a citizen scientist, a software engineer who has like gone crazy researching cholesterol over the last few years, doing experiments on himself. 
And he's got some theories, and um, I guess one of his things is a lean mass hyperresponder, where you've got an elevated HDL, a low triglyceride, and a sub, like a high level of, of LDL. And that LDL used as a marker would usually scare the shit out of doctors, scare the shit out of you into thinking that, you know, you're on your way to a heart attack tomorrow. But, I mean, there's other things. It's context. There's a lot of things out there that that, that kind of... That, that, challenge the the narrative the challenge what we think we know about cholesterol and um the lean mass hyperresponder phenomenon or um phenotype i guess you'd say is someone who's very relatively lean or lean been on a ketogenic low carb whatever what have you fat adapted so to speak diet and they've got this triad of cholesterol where the good HDL cholesterol, apparently, the good stuff, is, is really high, which is good. The triglycerides, which is your fat in your blood, is relatively really low, which is good. But your LDL is that one anomaly that's elevated past the point of, we'll say, safety, where most doctors would probably prescribe a statin. But it's context. And I kind of fall into that category. He was doing a study I wanted to, to, to sign up for it, but I hadn't been low carb long enough to fit the criteria. But these things, like I've got friends now that are asking me about cholesterol and I, I urge you to, to talk to some, just find out some information about low carb um, protocols. And do I think everybody should be ketogenic? I don't know if it's everybody needs to be. I think everybody should be fat adapted to a certain extent and metabolic flexibility is a very key ingredient in metabolic health let alone health and i think there's ways to come and get there and there's ways that are we'll probably get into it in the future um and yeah i just want to start helping people think everybody's different there's no one size fits all for anything i i believe we are human as a species and there should be specific appropriate things that we can do to push our genes and our health in the right direction and then there's the mitigating factors that, you know, maybe to everybody, it's not as severe. I mean, if you have good glucose control, it's arguable to say that carbohydrates are bad in, in the first place. Mind you, when you look at it from the microbiome, gut digestion side of things, there's an argument there about how much and do we even really need grains and seeds, maybe even nuts. So you've got so many different things going on, whether you try paleo, whether you try plant-based whether you try carnivore whether you try keto there's rules to those stupid diets and the mediterranean diet what does that mean there's so many countries in the mediterranean i mean there's you know i would say it's based around extra virgin olive oil which could be good i believe it i believe it should be it probably is good for you but you know it comes down to the good fats bad fats i mean i think there's some some commonalities with like simple carbohydrates and bad fat together donuts so to speak is probably not good and it's not good to get your calories from that i mean you need to be getting your calories from you are well if you look at it another another guy that if you're if you hear this and you want to get into this stuff sean stevenson the model health show is another guy that is phenomenal about breaking down why and it basically comes down to this you are what you eat now if you're craft dinner ritz crackers and getting Mr. Noodles and Campbell's Soup for your nutrition, you might have to take a step back and look at it that, you know, I believe that what nature or God intended is a lot different than what we're being sold and what we're being told. So I think if you can try and get to as whole natural food as possible, and of course there's other branches to the tree, you know, like you might be sensitive to some vegetables, you might be sensitive to some fruits, you might be sensitive to some you know, things that are in certain foods and ingredients. But, you know, for the most part, I think if you're metabolically healthy, which it's pretty easy to see, look down. If you've got a gut or if you're, you know, holding some extra pounds, you might you might have metabolic syndrome and you might need to see how well you're absorbing, digesting, and utilizing the nutrients that you're putting in there. Just because you're eating it doesn't mean you're absorbing it. Doesn't mean you're getting it. Doesn't mean it's bioavailable. And you can talk all day long about the gut microbiome and, and probiotics, but 
you need to cultivate a good environment. And I think it starts with the basics. Like you need good gut health. And in order to achieve that, you have to look at your severity of possible harm. So bone broth to somebody might not be good because their gut isn't ha able to handle it. I know there's a, there's argue, arguments all over the board about histamine responses and, and uh, some allergy problems, but you're healing your gut. That that's that you are what you eat. So everything that you put into your body, if it's if it's building or structural tissue, blood, this protein, you need it, and you need good source protein, and a lot of it. You know what's the best amount? We don't know. No one does. They can guess. What what's different for a bodybuilder compared to someone who just wants to stay relatively lean and have a good musculature and and good solid muscles? will be completely different than someone that needs to lose, you know, 40, 50 pounds. So I think it's context and what I've been learning, reading about, like, you know, there's, there's people out there that'll help you. Dr. Ken Berry, amazing. Dr. Rob Sivas, the carb addiction doc, check his, his stuff out. He's no bullshit. He'll say that quite a bit. And you know, these, these doctors are all against the grain. But they're getting results. And I think there's something to be said about anecdotal evidence. And I think there's something to be said about seeing what works for you. Coming into your own um, ness, so to speak. Intuition. Um, knowing when to eat, what to eat. And you know, like it's, it's open for debate. And you are your own best client. And experiment. Become your own experiment. Figure this stuff out. Because... It's amazing when you cut out bread or you cut out sugar or you cut out bread and sugar or you cut out grains, things start changing. Things start happening for the good and you'll notice. And you know what? Hey, if, if, you, if you don't notice anything, incorporate them back in. You might be one of the people that, that doesn't affect. But, you know, when we look at disease and everything skyrocketing, obesity, you know, I never heard of, of celiac disease when I was a kid. I never heard of, you know, there was maybe a couple of hyperactive kids, but this ADHD, the stuff, there is something going on that is making us sicker. And it has to do with our environment, our lifestyle, what we're putting in our bodies and what they're putting, giving to us, whether it's plastics or tap water. I mean, there's, there's extremes to everything, but I think trying to narrow it down and making some good choices Try something for 30 days. Skip, stop something for 30 days. Stop eating sugar. Stop eating added sugar. You know, whether you cut out cereal is another, another whole ball game. Cut out dairy. See what happens. You know, you might, you might find that that's that food sensitivity that you've been, you know, I was lactose intolerant. I'm not lactose intolerant anymore. I don't know how this happened, but I don't know whether I established a good microbiome. I don't know whether my gut health got stronger. Um, but all I know is my metabolic I'm metabolically flexible I mean I can eat carbohydrates and not get hunger cravings I don't I, I fast every day from well I, I don't know if it's even fasting calling it like I don't eat before noon let alone two o'clock usually around would be my first meal and then um, I usually have a big protein dense dinner with you know some tonight I had yeah like I said two ribeyes some mushrooms a little bit of shallot um, some butter an avocado cheese cheese excuse me so find your own way and you can do it. You know, um, exercise is one thing, but just getting out and moving, getting up, use it or lose it. It's simple. Go for a walk. Anytime you think that you're bored, do something physical, push-ups, anything, anything that starts stimulating yourself. I'm, I'm about to have my, my uh, second cold shower of the year. Uh, I'm going to keep continuing to do that. Um, and yeah, I will record these videos. I don't want to make it too long, but you know, if anybody hears this or anybody wants to be helped, you know, you can message me or, you know, get a, get a, get a hold of me. And I, I want to help people find what I've found. And I believe I'm on the right track because, you know, the best, like, a good, uh, a, a, I follow Dr. Sean Baker, who is a avid carnivore who believes everybody should be eating meat, which I, I, tend to agree with for a, a lot um but he says the best predictor of your of your future health is your health right now so you got to start with the first step and that first step can mean walk up the stairs once it doesn't have to be huge 
But once you start making changes and are willing to accept that there is things out there that will help you and you can help yourself. It's one baby steps at a time. Nothing happens overnight. And, you know, one day I'll get into my journey and how it all happened. And, and you know, I, I, I'm, I, I like the science now. I never used to, but now I do. I like to know why. And I'm not going to stop asking why. And until I have all the answers, it's probably going to be for the rest of my life. So happy January 2nd, everybody. Um, this might be a backlog for once I try and brand myself. I'm working on it. I'm going to try and get some a company together and some kind of way to get out to people that are in trouble that need help and I'm here for you. I would like to help people find themselves and become their own experiment and their own success story. It's not about me now. Um, I believe we need we need to come together and we need to start start asking some serious questions about what is what is good. And uh, we'll leave it at that. Have a great day, night, and we'll talk to you soon.